Alrighty, so in these problems, it's interesting because I was a little bit mean. Um, we're trying to find out how much heat, so we're going to be in kilojoules or joules, is needed to melt this amount of solid diethyl ether, which I had forgotten to write the formula for. It's right here for you guys. And this is the um, conversion factor that we're going to use. This is called the heat of fusion, and that's what I use when I'm talking about melting. Now, um... All you have to do, really, it's really not that bad. You just start with your given, and so your given in this problem is your 23.9 grams. And now I'm going to need to get into kilojoules eventually. Now the only way to get into kilojoules is first to get into moles so that I can use this conversion factor. So as always, I'm going to put my, my units first, and then I'm going to put my numbers. And so I'm going to put grams on bottom here. I'm going to put moles up top, so now I'm in moles. Now I can get into kilojoules, so I'm going to put moles on bottom. And I'm going to put kilojoules up top. Now, let's say, and I'll do it just for this one and not for the next one. Let's say I'm wanting to get into joules because I didn't stipulate. So. I would have to do one more crisscross swoosh, get rid of kilojoules, and put joules up top. Now, do you have to do that if I don't stipulate? Not at all, but on a tester quiz, I would stipulate which one you need to get into. Now, for grams to mole, whenever you see grams and moles, guys, you're going to have to be writing your um, molar mass. And so the molar mass of carbon is 12.01, so 12.01 times 4, plus the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 1.008 times 10, plus 16 for oxygen. And so I get 74.12 for the molar mass, 0.12, molar mass of diethyl ether. And then one mole here. Now for this conversion from kilojoules to moles, the whole reason for this was that I gave you your heat effusion, which is 7.27 kilojoules per mole. So 7.27 kilojoules for every one mole. Now the last thing you're going to do is have a joule to kilojoule conversion. And so there are a thousand joules in every one kilojoule because kilojoules are the bigger unit. And so now what you're going to have to do to solve, you just take 23.9, you divide it by 24.12, then you multiply by 7.27, and then you, if you're trying to get into joules, multiply by a thousand. So if you didn't multiply by a thousand, if you're just in kilojoules, you would have gotten 2.34 kilojoules because remember I'm wanting one, two, three sig figs. If I'm going into joules, I would have 2,340 joules. Now, just to double check that this answer makes sense, right now I have a positive heat, meaning this is an endothermic reaction. So let's make sure that that makes sense. If I'm melting, I'm going from a solid to a liquid. I need to put energy into that because that's an endothermic reaction. How much heat is required? Required means how much does it take? And therefore, it, this should be positive, so I'm good to go. For the next one, I tell you that water is condensing. Okay? So the process of condensing, before I even start, the water condensing is an exothermic reaction. It releases energy, and so my my heat is going to have to be negative. So just to remind myself, I'm going to put a negative here because even though I didn't tell you that, you need to know that the amount of heat that's released is negative. Therefore, my heat of vaporization is going to be negative for the condensing of water. That's how we distinguish between condensing and vaporization. It's just a negative. So here, I start off again with my 4.25 grams. It's my given. Okay. I'm going to, again, want to get into moles. So notice, even though I gave these different sections and I treat them differently, these problems are identical, except for different heats of vaporization versus heats of fusion. Um, so then I put moles on bottom. I put kilojoules up top. And I'm just going to stay in kilojoules, because why not? Um, I need to put the molar mass here for grams per mole. And so for hydrogen, you've got two hydrogens, which each have a molar mass of 1.008 plus the 16. So it's 18.016. Okay. 
for every one mole. Then for here, this conversion is going to be 44.0 kilojoules for every one mole. And so when I do the math, 4.25 divided by 18.016. Oh, and remember that this is negative because it's an exothermic reaction. If you don't want to write that, that's fine, but make sure that you include your negative in your answer. So I got 10 point, negative 10.3796. I want three sig figs, so this is going to be negative 10.4 kilojoules. And that makes sense because heat is being released because this is an exothermic reaction, condensing is. And so I'm done. And that's it, guys.